welcome all of you to this year's general managers meeting where our theme is unleash the power it's been a very eventful year from the last time we met as our team looks back at our last shareholders meeting it was an ugly scene <laughs> <laughs> and i had to stand up there like this man but now this year i'm actually looking forward to this year's shareholder meeting because we get to share with them record results that everyone in this room helped bring about. And this is what I'm expecting to see. You know, at this time last year, the media gurus were writing our, obit our obituaries, and they were calling me a pit bull. Moi. <laughs> Understand it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Me. <laughs> but Mama get a kick out of that. <laughs> but we know our team was going to make it happen. That the long-term results would be worth the short-term pain. Many times the press had us dead and buried. You guys all saw it. But we knew that it wasn't true. We knew that the team we assembled could turn our company around, and to the credit of everyone here, we did it. Now the press is writing about the turnaround being legitimate, the best turnaround they've seen in 10 years. And we have control of the company. Now they're calling me a teddy bear. <laughs> It's all right. <laughs> but we can't let that go to our heads. You've all heard me talk about a lot of times. We can't become legend in our own minds, because when that happens, bad things happen. You've heard me say before that I feel personally responsible for each of our 9,500 team members to make sure that they get a pay period every week. As a manager, you should feel the same responsibility. Many of our team members have two or three people relying on them and that could potentially mean that 27,000 people are depending on CompUSA for their livelihood. If we don't lead the company well, we'll affect a lot of lives of these people. Today we're the industry leaders, but so was Kmart, so was Grants, so was Highland Superstores. We have to look ahead to guarantee that we're here for the long run. Since our last meeting, we've accomplished a lot, but we still have a long way to go. We're here to celebrate what, we're, what we've achieved and look at what we still have to do. Over the next few days, we'll clearly show what we expect from you and we'll give you the plans you'll need to achieve your goals. I want you to think of these plans as your personal wealth guarantee. When we achieve them, we're all going to make lots of money. We're here to unleash the power we've begun to generate. To put it all in perspective, we're now at the point that we can see a world-class company in the making. We've grown a lot, but we have a long way to go. We've heard about the incredible turnaround we pulled off this year. But as I look back, it wasn't even that incredible. It wasn't even that hard. We just had to make a few minor mid-course adjustments. All of these. And what we did is we, we, we sat down and tried to figure out what had to be done with the company so we had all managing around, sitting around talking about what we should do. And we came up with 44 different things. I want to talk about some of them. And I said, well, we just can't afford to do that. And everybody unanimously said, well, we'll just cut payroll. We got too much anyway. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, first of all, <laughs> cut the payroll's not a good joke for the next one, hell. <laughs> no one was laughing. Those four guys are coming back to get me. First of all, we had to change our company from a sales-driven company to a profit-driven company. We had to change the entire culture. We had to slow our growth to get organized, to regroup, to put a strong team in place. We had to fend off hostile takeovers. That wasn't in the plan. Okay. And that was probably not the most fun I ever had with my clothes on. <laughs> okay. We had to fix our retail business. We had to improve our in-stock position. 
strengthen our in-store merchandise, improve our in-store concept, introduce comp kids and software sampler. We had to make the needed changes in our corporate business, improve their pay structure on commission, add regional sales directors, set up a warehouse system in Mesquite, and outsource to distributors. We had to improve our team member training because you know what, there wasn't any. We created our satellite TV network, two million bucks. We didn't have it at the time. We implemented leadership training, which we've all been through, including myself. We opened up an assessment center for our store management. We had improved in customer training. We had improved the quality of our trainers. And we had increased profits in the segment. You know what? Because there wasn't any. In tech services, we went from losing a million dollars a month to now making a substantial profit. I think that's an attaboy, guys. We hired regional tech managers and we introduced on-site delivery and setup. In merchandising, we centralized inventory replenishment. No controversy there. <laughs> but we reduced our inventory and increased our turns. In operations, we transformed our general managers into P&L managers. We reduced our shrink. We made our ESP program a lot more profitable. In advertising, remake. With the four color newspaper inserts, added zero percent financing, and expanded, expanded our radio, radio box. We wanted all the customers, first time buyers, everybody. And to support our store growth, we put enough people in training to ensure that we don't bleed existing stores when we open new ones. Right now, we have 20 general managers in training waiting for stores and 60 middle, middle managers in training ready to hit the ground running. In finance, guys did a great job. We now have a $70 million line of unsecured credit, up from $50 million a year ago that was secured. Don't need it, but it's nice to have. And the list goes on. I mean, is this. Okay. What we did last year, in one year, is what most companies would take 10 years. And that's why it's been a dramatic turn of you that everybody here has turned in. these changes have turned our business and our profit around and also Wall Street's opinion of us. Just look at where our stock price was last year around this time and where it is today. Again, what difference a year makes. In one year, you folks have increased our shareholder value or our market cap from $130 million to $670 million, create an extra $540 million in wealth for our shareholders. Congratulations, all of you. All of the changes we've made have worked. They've turned the company around to the point at which we've been able to do some great things for our people. First off, we promoted a lot of people this year. Secondly, We've uncapped the bonuses. There are no maximums anymore. We've doubled the 401k contribution. And we created a new personal holiday, which would be terrific for everybody. Also, we've repriced the stock options at $12 for everyone below vice president creating over three million dollars of personal wealth among our team members in this room. We've achieved a lot this past year, but now we have to make sure that we don't get complacent despite all our achievements. This is the time to go after the competition. This is the time to go in for the kill. Attila the Hun said, great businessman, it's important to win, but it's just as important that everybody else loses. <laughs> Duh. But now let's talk about a few things we have to do between now and the next time we meet. Last year we had 44 business plans. That was a lot. 66. <laughs> See, last year was kind of a dress rehearsal for this year. First, we've got to get our profits up. Right now, we earn seven, per, seven tenths of a percent after taxes. Okay, that gets us up to just about awful. Okay, I'm not laughing. We've got to aim at doubling that. It won't be easy, but I'm gonna expect that we meet that goal. 
We need to move our earnings per share from $1.21 to double that. We need to do that to move towards being a world-class company. We have to continue to maximize our sales. We have to continue to grow each of our seven individual businesses. And we have to continue to improve our customer service because without customer service, there are no customers. No one can survive on price and selection alone, which I think Dr. Barry will probably touch on. We have to continue and train our people because they're our future. And the list goes on, you'll hear about it during the week. These are just some of the things we need to do. There are plans and goals for each department and store, which you'll hear about this week. And remember, I prefer to keep my teddy bear image. But if we don't make our plans, we bring the other guy back. Okay. We have a great year ahead of us. We're here to unleash the power, unleash earnings, and unleash rewards. I want to put in perspective what kind of company CompUSA is and what we think of our team members. We all know we earned about $23 million last year. We just passed out $4 million in bonuses to non-officers. We upped the 401k match, which cost us another million dollars. We repriced the stock options to the non-officers, which grew their wealth in excess of $3 million. And we had a personal holiday that cost us another million dollars. We want to get back to our team members as long as we see our earnings growing. And guess what we are? We're the team members. We expected a lot from you last year, and you delivered. We believe in rewarding that kind of performance. Now, we've got even, now we have to get even more from you if we're going to get to where we need to go. That should have been more dramatic. <laughs> I, you know, I'm going to do it again. I'll take, take two. <laughs> we've expected a lot from you last year, and you delivered. We believe in rewarding that kind of performance. Now that we've got, see, that's a tough word. <laughs> okay. We're going to do it again. We have expected a lot from you last year and you delivered. We believe in rewarding that kind of performance. Now we've got to have even more from you to get where we need to go. <laughs> I think you can see that our senior management team is committed to our company and to our team. And we're investing back into the individuals that can take care of this company. We're here to keep the momentum, go momentum going, to unleash the power of CompUSA. Now let's get started. Thank you. I feel a little bit like uh, Babe Ruth when he's standing at the plate pointing to center field before the game starts. Uh, this is a year, guys, we're going to hit a home run. Uh, and I'm really proud this morning to be standing before the group that's being written up in every business journal, every study for pulling off the fastest major turnaround in retail history. USA truly had an outstanding year, and each of us in the room should feel proud because we all played a role. We made it happen, we stayed focused, we executed, and we actually made change happen very, very quickly. I'd like to take you back to this same time last year when we were having this meeting. At last year's meeting, we talked a lot about returning the company to profitability. We talked about reducing the shrink. We talked about general managers running their whole business, being in charge of retail, corporate, government, and training, and technical services. And if you remember, we spent quite a bit of time talking about PDL, Positive Dynamic Leadership. With the emphasis being Positive Dynamic Leadership focused on running a bottom line, profit-oriented business. And you know, as I look back at it, we made it happen. Every single one of them. Great job.
And we spent some time last night, and we're going to spend a little more today celebrating because we should feel good about our results, and it's a time to celebrate. But as we all know, in retail, it's what did you do for me lately? Last year is already yesterday's news. So before we get really down to business and talking about this year, I'd like to talk just a little bit of reality. Because CompUSA did have a tremendous turnaround, and we had a really good year. We worked hard, we stayed very focused on the issues, we improved every piece of our business, and we did return the company to profitability, which was our number one goal, if you remember. But as exciting as that is, the reality is we still have such a long way to go. While we went from losing millions of dollars to making over $20 million last year, reality is it's only seven-tenths of one penny for every dollar we took in. Seven-tenths of one penny. By anybody's measure, that's razor-thin profits. Our goal this year is to move our company from a company that if you look at the financials is an okay company now, from an okay company with okay profits, moving towards being a world-class retailer with respectable profits. You've heard over the last few months, Jim Halpin, myself, some of the other senior management group, talk about the goal of becoming a world-class retailer. And I'd like to spend a moment or two and sort of share with you my thoughts on what I mean by being a world-class retailer. By world-class, we're talking about being the best, the best of breed. Not just as good as the competition, not just a little better, but world-class. If I could, let me share some examples with you of what I think may explain world-class a little. There's a lot of good athletes today. As an example, in basketball, tremendous amount of good athletes, but only a very few ever reach the status of world-class. Maybe Will Chamberlain, Michael Jordan, a very select few. In golf, lots of good golfers. But again, when you think world-class, Arnold Palmer, Jack Nicklaus, very few make that status. Around the world today, there's lots of amusement parks, but Disney is clearly in a class by themselves. I think you get the picture. Not just good, but world-class. And for a company to become world-class, it requires a very strong, focused, and committed management team at every level of the organization. A management team that has a clear vision of the company direction and company priorities. A management team that is staying focused on those priorities and communicating the priorities to all of our team members. And it requires a management team with a very high level of intensity towards execution. So if I could, because I think it's important, I'd like to be just a little repetitive and run, tick off those items one more time that I think it takes to make a world-class retailer. It takes a company with a clear vision of the company direction and priorities. A company with a focused and committed management team at every level with a high level of intensity on execution. It takes a management team that provides the PDL, positive dynamic leadership and great communication with all the team members. And we have that management team here at CompUSA. We're going to move this company this year towards world class. Now let's spend a minute and talk about this year's company direction and our priority. I don't know if you can take notes in the dark, but if you're going to remember anything from, from this conference today, we all want to walk out of here with the same vision and priorities. And I'm going to spend the next few minutes just sort of ticking them off.
Let's make no mistake about that the company's number one goal is to improve profitability to double last year's profits. Doubling last, doubling last year's profits is a huge task. And as I was putting this presentation together, I'm thinking, how do I convince this audience that doubling is going to be cake? Because that's what we have to do this year, is double the profits. We are a sales organization, and our first priority is increase the sales. And our plan is to do that by having exciting, in-stock, well-presented stores with well-trained, highly knowledgeable, friendly team members that provide truly world-class service. Our second priority, and this one you're going to hear a lot about over the next few days, is sell the extended service protection, ESP. Big time sell it. Our goal is to reach 2% of total sales with ESP. With the new deal that you're going to hear about today, and that you know a little bit about from Warren Tech coming around already training, if we can do 2% ESP sales, that alone will double the profits. Let's just do a little arithmetic, if you can follow me on this. We did, the year that just ended, about $30 million in ESP. And we made 40 points margin on it. So it produced about $12 million to company profits. If we do 2% of our business, our plan is about $3.5 billion. That's $70 million this year. With the new deal we've negotiated with the vendor, it's 60% margin. Do the arithmetic, 60 times 70, $42 million a pickup of about $30 million over last year, more than doubles our profit. So when we talk about ESP, and we're going to spend a lot of time with it, it is very, very high on our priority list towards doubling the profits. We have to leave here today with hundreds of ESP animals going out to sell this program. The third piece of our business strategy to double the profits is to explode our service businesses. Last year, our training business, our customer training business, generated about $30 million. Our plan this year is to do over $50 million. It's a real focus of the organization. When I say explode our service businesses, we're talking about not only training, but corporate sales. Our, our goal in corporate sales is to have our comp store gain in corporate exceed our comp store gain in retail. And if you watch the JDA screen, that's been happening for about the last six or eight weeks. So we're on the track to do that. Our third service business that we're expecting a major explosion in is tech services. It's a business we intend to double. We intend to do about $40 million this year. You're going to hear an awful lot about it at the breakout session today because it's a business we're going to turn inside out. We are totally going to do tech services in a different vein, at a different level, for a different customer. In addition to what we know as tech services today, it's an exciting piece of our plan. I think you'll be really uh, excited as you walk out of Rick Fountain's breakout session. They have a lot of exciting things to talk about. The fourth priority in making sure we double last year is we have to reduce the shrink just a little more. It's something as a group you're to be congratulated on because you did a terrific job last year. The company shrink for the year last year is 4.41, great number. This year, in our plan to double LY, we need a shrink of 0.35 or less. It's actually a pretty easy deal, guys. If everybody that had less than 0.35 just holds the number, and anybody who had more gets down to that number, we're golden. But we expect every store to be a 0.35 or less. 
The next thing on our list of priorities to doubling the profits is execute Windows 95. And I'm not just talking about execute the launch, which happens this week, which is probably the most fun and most exciting part of it, but we're talking for the rest of the year, executing add-on sales, add-on and software sales, all the Norton utilities, all the things that you heard about on the broadcast. We're talking about selling additional accessories. We're talking about selling hard drives, memories, training. We're talking about selling tech services to upgrade machines. It's our goal not to let any customer walk into our store and purchase Windows 95 and leave without having something attached to it. Every Windows 95 cell has to have an attachment with it. And that's a message we need to get back to all of our team members. Our goal should be to let no one buy Windows 95 without some other products attached to it. The next priority in doubling the, the company's profits is the continued control of expenses. It's another area last year we did a great job in as a group. But there are a few lines that could stand some improvement, and there's always a challenge of controlling payroll in, in a big company. The last thing I'm going to talk to you about today as one of our priorities in doubling the company's profits, and perhaps the most important of all of them, is what I call commitment. Your personal commitment. Your team's commitment. And I'm talking about real commitment, not just lip service. And if I could, let me elaborate a little bit on what I call just lip service. Recently, as I've been traveling stores, as the guys know where I've been in stores, we're talking a lot about ESP. And as I talk with the management team in the stores, we've got the retail manager, the operations manager, the tech manager, the warehouse managers, the hardware managers, we get the group together. And the question becomes, are you really committed to selling ESP? And the answer is always yes. I've not been in a store yet where they said no. So as we have everybody lined up, we sort of give the acid test. And we go to each member of management and say, if you're really committed, tell me about how many you sold personally today. In many stores, our commitment starts to break down at that point. Guys start looking at the top of their shoes, checking out what's going on down there. They don't want to look you in the eye. That's the difference between talking about it giving it lip service and being committed. Every member of management leading by example, selling every day, showing the team members how to do it, not just talking about it. Every member of management being excited about the programs that we're talking about here today, conveying that excitement to our team members in the store, and keeping that intensity on it day after day after day ensures us of having a great year. It's the same whether we're talking about ESP or training or tech services. We should be able to look our management team in the eye and say, what did you do today personally to move this business along? Are you talking about it? Or are you making it happen? And if we're going to double our profits, we have to make it happen every day. So those are the priorities. And I believe if we do those, that doubling last year's profits is not only possible, but probable. But in addition to the priorities I've just outlined, we can't go backwards on any of the progress we made last year. And you heard Jim go through his cards of the list of projects and the list of things that we improved in the company last year. Such things as having strong in stocks, single item end caps, hard sell signing, such things as having the general managers running their entire business, being involved in every piece of their business, controlling our strength. We established a three check mark ad setup program. The four foot and four inch walk routine, which has now been put into the Red Book program. We established PDL as a company culture, positive dynamic leadership, good communication with our team members. And for the buying organization, a goal of 100% in stock on ad products 
and enough product to last through the ad for every ad. Those things that I just ticked off, we're expecting this year to be givens. We may not spend as much time talking about them, following up on them, and frankly, we shouldn't have to. We spent last year learning that piece of the business. But it's imperative that we don't let one piece of it go backwards. We're talking about being world class, about doubling our profits. We cannot go backwards, not even a small step. Now, as I was putting these remarks together, sort of rereading what we just talked about, it occurred to me, boy, this is a fairly long list. This is big things we're talking about doing. And I would bounce it off Alpha and I said, Jim, you know, this sounds like a lot. And he looked me dead in the eye and says, how world class isn't easy. Doubling the company's bottom line isn't easy. And making big bonuses is not easy. And as I thought about that, I thought he's right. It may not be easy, but if you want easy, we're in the wrong place. We're here to knock the socks off the retail. We're here to double the profits. It may not be easy. And world class means commitment, 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 execution, execution, execution. But you've already proved you can do it, and we're going to do it big time this year. I'd like, if I could, to follow up just a little bit on Dr. Barry's remarks of last night and talk about world class from the point of view of a customer. Because for the customer, it's a three-sided triangle. The customer expects price, selection, and service. And Dr. Barry talked last night about service is almost everything that's not price and selection. But if we can execute this triangle from the customer's point of view, we win big. And we get what Dr. Barry talked about as true customers. Customers that are happy they did business with us after they've done business with us and will do business with us again. And we can only double our profits if we're truly focused on the priorities we talked about from an operational issue and on the customer service triangle here of providing the best selection, price, and customer service in the industry. At the risk of putting everybody to sleep so early in the morning, but I want to make sure you walk out of here with that clear vision that I talked about, that there's no room for anybody not knowing what the expectation is. Everybody understands, I can't see too good for the lights out, so I need to hear you a little. Double the profits. Yes. And I'm gonna tick down one more time how we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it by increasing sales, yes. by selling ESP to be at least 2% of our total sales, yes. to explode our service businesses, training corporate and tech services. Yes. To reduce our shrink one more time. Yes. <laughs> Windows 95, attachment, attachment, attachment. Yes. Tight expense control. Yes. Positive dynamic leadership for our team members. Yes. And your personal commitment to make it happen. Yes. Write it down, Jim, it's in the bank. The theme of this meeting is unleash the power. And last year was good, but between each meeting today, you've seen the, the faces of success. The people that made it happen last year, and the people that we're planning on making it happen this year. We want to empower you to go back and empower your team to do whatever it takes to make those priorities that we've just talked about. We've got a big task in front of us. It's going to be a great year. So let's get ready, get focused, get intense, and get committed. We're going to unleash the power, your power, the power of your team, 
We're going to have a fabulous year. Thank you very much.